Hey guys, Excalibur here. So today I'm bringing you the first part of a tutorial series on how to create your own flight animation blueprint. Um, at the end of this tutorial, your results will be, uh, your character will be able to move. You'll see he doesn't move in the direction of the camera, in the direction that your character, that your keys are going. But that is because when you take off into flight, you will be able to have eight directional movement as well as flying in the direction of the camera is facing. Along with this you'll also be able to jump and take off into flight while in air. So we'll get right into this. Uh, I'm going to be using the engine 4.20 but you can use any of the engines that is compatible with flight locomotion or the flight animation blueprint. Um, for me I'm going to be using the flight locomotion animations, so you'll see it being created from scratch. Um, to do this, I'll be using the third person uh, template. I'll just call this flight BP tutorial. Let that create. Go back into the browser and I will add the flight locomotion to the project. Flight BP tutorial. Okay. Give that a second to add. Okay. So now we're in our project. We have the third person player bl blueprint. First thing I want to do is create a new level just for testing. I'll just do the default level. And I'm going to save this as inside the maps folder as tutorial test. All right. So the first thing we need to do is set up our file management. Um, this will just be for ease of access, a cleaner setup, so you can find things. Um, so inside of the flight locomotion folder, I'm going to be creating a new folder. We'll call this blueprints. This is where the character blueprint is going to be located and any other type of blueprint such as game modes. The flight animation blueprint project already has these folder setups for you so you can skip this step. And then inside of the animation folder I'll create a new one and we'll call this AFL BP. That is for advanced flight locomotion blueprint. This is where our animation blueprints and blend spaces will be stored. The one reason why I'm using the AFL um, in the name is because now if I just search AFL, all of my advanced flight locomotion items will be right on the screen. Alright, so what we need to do is make sure that the maps and modes are set up. So we'll go to edit, project settings, maps and modes, and you have third person game mode. Hit the magnifying glass to find it and I'm going to open up a new content browser so I can make it more organized. I'm going to drag and drop this into my blueprint folder just so all my blueprints are in one place. Okay. So next we want to do is get our control set up. So back in the project settings, navigate down to engine and input. The flight animation blueprint project already has all of these controls set up. Um, so for this, I'll just show you. Right now we only need to add takeoff. And for me, I'm going to use the F key. You can use whatever key you are satisfied with. Later, uh, in other tutorials, we'll be adding different input um, inputs such as uh, sprinting, barrel rolls. All right, so now it's time to create our blueprints first one we want to create is our character blueprint. So go to the blueprint folder, right click a blueprint class and make sure you select character. And I'll call this AFL player BP for player blueprint. Save it. And now we want to create the 
animation blueprint. So right click in the AFL BP folder we created earlier, go to animation, animation blueprint, and you want to make sure you select the skeleton that is the actual flight locomotion skeleton. That would be this one. It goes game, flight locomotion, mannequin character mesh. And we'll name this AFL and in BP. All right. Now, what we want to make sure we do is take the third person player animations, such as the running and jumping and walking and idle animations, and we want to retarget them over to the flight locomotion skeleton. So, to do that, we'll find them all and open one of them up. We'll just go to skeleton, go to the retarget manager, select your humanoid rig, auto map, and save. Now the flight locomotion and flight animation blueprint skeletons are already retargeted. If you're using the flight animation blueprint project, you do not need to do this step. They are already retargeted for you. So you'll just right click, retarget anim asset. And you select the UE for mannequin skeleton. And if you see both mannequins in the source and the target, that means you have it set up properly. So retarget. And now you'll have all these animations, which you can then put inside of a new folder, which I will call mannequin cannons. And we'll just drag and drop and move them there. OK. Now what we need to do is take the third person game mode and we want to go to the default pawn class and set up the AFL player BP. This will make it so when we hit play we are utilizing this character blueprint not the third person player blueprint that was provided by Unreal. Alright so now what we want to do is actually go inside of the player blueprint and we're going to start setting things up. So the first thing we need to set up is the mannequin, so we'll go to mesh, and under the details panel with the skeletal mesh, we want to find the flight locomotion skeleton. And you'll see he's outside of the capsule, so to put him inside, we'll drop him down negative 90 units and under the transform, and then we'll rotate him negative 90 degrees. Now he is facing the way the arrow is facing, and now we need a camera, so we'll add a spring arm. This will work as the camera boom. Make sure that the camera boom is set up to the capsule component, not connected to the mesh. And we want to add a camera. And I'll call this follow camera. And make sure that the follow camera is attached to the camera boom. So you want to go to inside the camera boom, use pawn control rotation, and I also like to enable camera lag. This just adds a little bit of smoothness. And you want to take this, put it up about like 30 units or so, just so it's around his abdomen area, so it's easier to easier to see when you're in game. All right, now we need to set up our controls. So if we go into the event graph. Just get rid of all that. What we can do is if we take the third person blueprint basic animate um, inputs, such as jumping, mouse input, and our movement inputs, and it's just a little shortcut. Copy and paste them. And we'll be creating one variable right now. And that's going to be a Boolean, and we'll name it Flight Pressed. So, just a little organization. What we need to set up, we have our movement input, but this is for when we're running. When we fly, you want to make sure that your character will fly in the direction of the camera. So I'll show you. Oops. So I'll show you that when we have it set up. So if we go to the movement input, 
I want to take the move forward. We're going to add a new movement input. We'll get the character movement. And we'll do is flying. So if the character is flying, we'll branch off of true of the move forward and connect it. So if the character is moving forward is set to true. What we want to do is get the world direction of the follow camera. So we get the forward vector and put it into our world direction. And we'll connect the axis values. So now what this is saying is if our character is, fly is not flying, we'll move normally. But if they are flying, we want our character to move in the direction that the camera is facing and not just on a two-dimensional plane. We want our character to move in all three axes, X, Y, and Z. So I'm just going to comment this and do move character direction of camera. All right, so we have our jump, our mouse input. Those are basic. What we need to set up now is actually going into flight. So earlier we made the takeoff input action. So we'll right click, search for our action events, takeoff. When this is pressed, we wanna to go to a branch. And if flight pressed is false, We're going to set it to true, and if it's true, we'll set it to false. This is like a toggleable event. And we'll get our character movement, and we want to movement mode. So just search for the movement mode, we want to set our movement mode. So if, when we press it, flight pressed is true, We'll set it to false, and we're going to set our movement mode to walking. And if flight pressed is true, we want to set the movement mode to flying. So now, so now we have it. If flight pressed is false, we'll set it to true. We'll go into flying, and once it's in flying, we can now move in the direction that the camera's facing. Compile and save it. That's all we need to do and set up for the um, player blueprint. So we can close out of that for now. Make sure we go into our game mode. Just make sure everything's set up properly. FL player BP. And now, so you'll see our character, he moves in the direction that the camera's facing on a two dimensional plane, but if we press F, now, our character will move in the direction that the camera is facing. So he'll be able to move up, down, as well as left and right. And you press F, and then he goes back to walking. Okay, so everything's set up properly. Now we need to set up our animations. The first thing we want to do is set up our blend spaces. So we'll go to the AFL BP folder in the animations, go to animation, and do blend space. You don't want to do a one dimensional, you want to do a two dimensional because we're doing eight directional movement. So we'll choose the UF, the Unreal Engine mannequin skeleton, that is the flight locomotion, and we're going to name this AFL flight movement 2D. We'll open it up. So now you see we'll have our axis settings that we need to set first. We're going to name the horizontal to direction, and that will be from negative 180 to 180, and we'll change the grid settings to 8 for 8 directions. And the vertical will do speed. I found that a speed from 0 to 400 is pretty typical, and it looks nice. Alright, so now what we need to do is set up our 
additive settings. So let's type in AFL in the asset browser. We'll just type in hover. This we can use later on if we have any additive poses. And now you want to take that same hover animation, the hover idle, and put it on all of these bottom grid crossings. So whenever we're at a speed of zero, we'll stay in idle. Now search for the soft fly. This will be like a walking speed while flying. So we'll take the AFL soft fly forward and we'll put it directly in the middle on the second row up. Take left and on the left hand side here, that's where our left animation goes. Forward left will go in between both of those. Forward right goes to the right of the forward animation. Right, back right, back, back left, and back again. Now what you do, if your speed increases to a speed of 100, your character will move in the direction that your arrow keys are choosing. This also adds in a leaning effect as well. So now we have our walking, let's get a running. So that is just the AFL fly animations. So we'll take the forward idle and again in the same areas as before, we wanna set up forward, left, right, forward, left, forward, right, back, back, right, back and back left. Now, if our speed increases to 400, we will be able to fly faster. One thing I will set up that I forgot, inside the blueprint, the player blueprint with character movement, we want to set the we want to set the max walk speed. All right, it's already set to 600. So that should be plenty. Just wanted to make sure that it is set up properly. Okay, now it's time to set up our animation blueprint. Actually get the character to move. So we'll go into our event graph. We'll need to create the following variables. We need a is flying as a boolean and an is in air boolean we also need a speed we'll set that to a float and we also need another float which is direction all right now so from event blueprint update animation drag off and do is valid and we'll do try get on owner you can copy and paste this from the regular third person player blueprint, but I'll just walk through these steps. All right, so from is valid. If it is valid, we wanna cast this to the AFL player BP. And we'll connect the, pawn, the object to try get pawn owner. Once it's connected, we'll branch off and make a sequence for organization. And the first thing we want to do is set is an error. So when our character jumps, we're going to set is an error. And we'll do from try get pawn odor, <clears throat> we will be setting the get movement component, finding it. And if the character is falling, that means they are in air. So this also will count for when you are at a, at a higher height and you stop flight, your character will be in the air as well. So that will set to true. All right, now what we want to do is set the speed. And we're going to get the velocity. 
try get pot owner. And from that, we'll get the vector length, vector length. Take the speed and we'll set it to that. Set is an error. Now we need to take the variable flight pressed from the player blueprint. So when we press it in the player blueprint, the animation blueprint will know what animations to play. So we'll get flight pressed. And we'll set is flying to true when flight pressed is true in the character blueprint. Now we need to get the direction. So that is going to be a combination of the velocity and the actor rotation. So again, we will get the velocity and we will get the actor rotation. And from that, we need to calculate the direction. So we'll just add another pin off the sequence And we'll drag the velocity into the velocity and the get actor rotation into the base rotation. So this will be getting our character's direction for when we are flying for the eight directional movement. And from that, we will set our direction to the calculated direction. All right. Later we'll be setting these up so it'll be a little bit cleaner in here, but for now with this first tutorial, since this is not a lot of stuff in the graph, we won't be worrying about it at the moment. All right, so we have the event graph set up. Let's go into the animation graph. If you don't see this tab here, say it's closed, go over to the My Blueprint tab, find the animation graph, and just double click it and it'll open for you. First thing we need to do is add a state machine. And we're going to name this locomotion. This is where all of our animation processing will take place. We'll connect the output into the result and we can open it up. First thing we need to set up is the blend space of the third person mannequin. One thing I did forget to do is retarget that over so we can do that right now. You just, just find it in the mannequin animations, right click, retarget, and just retarget it over so we don't have to do any setups. And I will find the content browser. And we'll just move here. All right, so we don't need any of those. We'll take the run. Run. Walk. If you are using the flight animation blueprint project, you don't need to set this up. However, since I didn't have it set up properly, I have to set it up. And if you're using the get rid of those. I would just force delete it. We don't need them. Just double check to make sure it's working. Perfect. Make sure whenever you do that, force delete something, just fix up your redirectories. And save all. Oops, fix them up again. Okay. Now we can go back into our animation blueprint and now we can set up our animation. So the first thing we want to do is when we start the game, we will take the third person idle run and we'll connect it to the entry. When you see that little check mark, drag and drop it. So go inside of the node, third person idle run 2D and take the speed and put it inside and connect it to 
the speed input. Now when you play, hold on, we'll get that set up. Another thing I forgot, make sure you always remember to do this, go inside your player blueprint with the mesh, we want to use the AFL and BP. Now our character will actually move when we play. You'll see he slides back and forth, but that's because we are going to be having the eight directional movement as well as the character will be looking in the direction of the camera and we'll get that set up in a later tutorial. But for today, we're just gonna get the basic setup. Okay, so we need to find the third person jump start. Jump loop. Jump end. And connect them into a loop. So we go inside third person jump start. And we want to do if is an error is true. And go inside the connection from the jump start to the jump loop. And we want to get the time remaining. So get the relative animation time remaining. And if that is less than 0.2, I found that is a good number. That's, th that's usually the typical number that everyone uses. If um, the jump start, the time remaining of it is around 0.2 seconds, we'll go into the jump looping animation. Now, if is an error, is not, true, say it, the characters hit the ground now, we'll go into the jumping end animation and we'll get the time remaining, and if that's equal to 0.2, again, we can test that, there we go, character jumps, perfect. All right, now we want to set up our AFL flight movement. This is the blend space that we just created. So just drag a connector. Right now, we, I won't be setting up takeoff animations. I'll be showing how to do that in a later tutorial. As well as falling from different heights. So if we go inside this node, we want to do is flying is set to true. And in the connector node from the flight movement to the third person idle run, if is flying is not true. So if it is true, we'll go into the new blend space. If it's not true, we'll stick with the third person idle run. So go inside of the node, the AFL flight movement two dimensional blend space node, and we want to connect our direction and our speed. Now if you compile and save, everything should be set up and working. Our character now flies eight directions of movement and flies in the direction of the camera. You'll see he has a very slow stop. Uh, we'll be setting that up with adaptive starts and stops as well in later in later tutorials, as well as looking in the direction of the camera. You can land, and then you can take off from flight. All right, so that concludes this first part of the tutorial. Now you have a basic setup. The next one, as I said, will be looking in the direction of the camera and turning when the camera gets too far to one side, so 90 degree turns and 180 degree turns, as well as I want to set up taking off animations, ascend animations, landing from multiple heights, so a soft landing, a medium landing, and a landing from really high up, as well as sprinting and supersonic movement with barrel rolls. Those will also have eight directions of movement, and then combat animations as well. So uh, stay tuned. I'll have those new next tutorials up later. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below, leave a like, uh, email me with any um, with anything you want to see in the future uh, videos or updates to packs, I am always taking suggestions. See ya.